Hello, Tashi Dele. I hope all of you are doing very well. Welcome back. Mm. We are in this year also, we are trying to continue uh, to understand more uh, about mm, the wisdom, uh, also wisdom by Kambopa from his book, The Jew Animal of Liberation. And I'm pleased uh, to have this opportunity, especially in this uh, auspicious month of Sabatawa, to be able to share some of this Dharma uh, through internet to all of you. And uh, as I always say, that this is very uh, auspicious opportunity for both the uh, uh, Dharma practitioners and Dharma instructor, and uh, that uh, we are able to make this uh, kind of time in our day-to-day -day life. Because normally what happens is uh, we are always, you know, uh, uh, overwhelmed by different activities, uh, especially the activity of the uh, mundane uh, world. So sometimes uh, we feel very uh, difficult to find uh, time for ourselves, especially to do uh, with our internal uh, understanding, internal level of understanding and especially with regard to these uh, teachings of different masters and especially uh, as being the follower of the Kamakaki tradition uh, it is very important that we try to understand these uh, different teachings of different masters of our lineage and especially and the Lord Kambopa uh, which is the root of all the Kamakaki lineages so therefore uh, we have been studying uh, from <clears throat> his book, The Jivin Honor of Liberation, and it is another opportunity for us in this year as well, that we are able to make this time for oneself and for the benefit of others as well. So for that reason, I'm very pleased that this opportunity has came and I'm able to share this time with you all. So we hope <coughs> we'll have uh, good merits by having this opportunity and obviously uh, those of you uh, who have been practicing Dharma for a long time, it will also uh, reinforce your practice. And also those who, of you who are new to the Dharma, it will still uh, bring lots of blessings and benefits. And it will at least plant a seed to one's uh, mind that slowly will lead us to liberation. And uh, generally speaking, uh, we as an individual, uh, as being a social anymore uh, we always find comfort we always find happiness healthy in a sleep in a food in a uh, good job so this is our nature we always want to be happy we always want to find something comfortable something comforts us in our day-to-day -day life there are many different means to in order to accumulate these comforts this happiness and most of the time we focus uh, this, uh, the external means uh, which are not permanent, which are not ultimate level of solution. But yet we try to find uh, different solutions with the external <clears throat> method. And we, in some level, we are very successful. We are able to make our life better compared with some centuries ago. But then there's a question again, are we happy? Are we satisfied? And the most of the time, unfortunately, we are not. We thought, we think that we have <clears throat> accomplished something, accomplished something, some tasks, we have find some solutions to our problems, but then there's another problem coming up. So it's like a circle of you know, un never ending uh, difficulties and uh, sufferings coming again and again. So we every time we need to find some different solutions. And according to the Lord Buddha, the best solution to all these troubles, all these problems, all these disappointments is to find from within ourselves, within to, our, to know the, our internal strength. If you're able to know your internal strength, then you will be able to overcome all these difficulties. Uh, other than that, if you try to find the solutions externally, 
you will always be exhausted. You will never be able to mm, uh, discard all these different troubles forever. So for that reason, it is uh, advisable that we are able, that we uh, read those uh, books, uh, practice those teachings, contemplate in the meaning of those teachings and putting them into our day-to-day -day life practice. So if you are able to do so, then you'll find more lasting happiness, more lasting comfort in your life. So therefore, one of the reasons why we are trying to listen to this teaching of Kambhava is to find some comfort, find some solutions to our problems, especially a problem that relates with our emotion, internal emotions, you know, uh, to uh, especially to tackle our uh, difficulties, uh, tackle our negative afflictions and emotions. When negative afflictions and emotions arises within our mind, how can we tackle them? How can we you know, overcome them? So that is why it is very important uh, to be able to make some time to study this, to practice them, contemplate them, and utilizing them into our day-to-day -day life. So as I always say, we should not uh, leave these teachings, these instructions, you know, beside uh, uh, some somewhere else, but we need to take them these beautiful instructions, these words of wisdom within yourself, then apply them into our day-to-day -day life. If you're able to do this, then definitely it will bring some changes into your life. It will bring some changes into your attitude, your motivation and so forth. And especially uh, with relate to the sentient beings, how you can uh, be helpful, how you can be beneficial to other sentient beings. Since we are living in this uh, same samsara, how can we contribute for the betterment of this samsara? Therefore, there are lots of beautiful instructions. If one, you know, really understand them and contemplate them and put them into practice, you as a one individual can make huge changes in the in the benefit for the benefit of other sentient beings. So why 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 not? Isn't it? So therefore. I'm happy that we are still trying to understand, continue our practices, uh, and then enrich our internal strengths of understanding or tackling our emotions and understanding the uh, unfabricated nature of phenomena. Okay, so people will do so as our tradition goes. I pay homage to Buddha Dhamma and Sangha and generate Bodhicitta by reciting <coughs> rubbish, uh, Prayers and poti, uh, giving rise to Bodhicitta. Sangye Jodam, Sangye Jodam, La, Jangju Bodo, Dame, Gapson, Jer, and Dagi, Jin, So, Gabe, So, Nam, Gay, and Dola, Pinjer, Sangye, Drupa, the Show, Sangye Jodam, Sangye Jodam, La, Jangju Bodo, Dame, Gapson, Jer, Dagi, Jin, So, Gabe, So, Nam, Gay, and Dola, Pinjer, Sangye, and Drupa, the Show, Sangye Jodam, Sangye Jodam, La, Jangju Bodo, Dame, Gapson, Jer, and Dagi, Jin, So, Gabe, So, Nam, Dola Benja Sangi and Dropara Sho Sanjian Damsin Dewa Dam Dewe and Gil Dam 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 Yerians are dying it down the way, Danyans and Bola never go to the same damn jet, they were down the way, get down the way, get the one 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 down the way, So like our <coughs> root guru, the very venerable Kenjan Changuru Mbache always starts uh, with uh, his teachings with uh, uh, asking his uh, devotees and his uh, <coughs> followers to generate bodhicitta. So this is very important. So as being his students, we should always uh, recall the importance of generating bodhicitta. 
uh, always trying to check your motivation because uh, motiv motivation, right motivation really matters in your um, uh, dharma activities, whether you're listening to teaching, whether you're chanting the mantras, whether you're meditating, whether you're uh, in the puja, reciting texts, or whether you are practicing generosity and so forth. Always you should <coughs> check your motivation. Uh, for what purpose you are doing this? You know, if you are doing all this with your self-centered attitude, then it is little uh, mistaken as Sumbhacha says. So we should always encourage ourselves that I'm doing something uh, good for the benefit of others and listening to this teaching so that in the future I'll be able to you know, lead other centuries towards the uh, goal, towards the liberation of, uh, from some suffering of samsara. Or at least I can help someone who is in need of help. So I can prepare now, as being here in my room, I can prepare myself. I can recall the importance of uh, benefiting sentient beings, helping others. I can uh, reinforce myself the importance of practicing generosity and so forth. So therefore, you, we should always check our motivation and if there is some kind of self-centered attitude, motiva motivation is involved or gaining yourself something, then we should uh, kind of purify this kind of uh, wrong directed uh, motivation and then we should uh, encourage ourselves that we are here uh, practicing the Dharma for the benefit of sentient beings. Because we see, we and other sentient beings are suffering in this samsara because of our uh, abhidya or ignorance, not knowing the true nature of phenomena. That's the main root cause. And today, we reach the chapter, uh, the sixth uh, paramita, the wisdom paramita. So this wisdom paramita, uh, the perfections of wisdom awareness or wisdom paramita, is the antidote to abhidya or ignorance. So that's why this is very important. This particular chapter is a very powerful chapter because it uh, enlightens us, you know, the nature of phenomena. It is again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is the antidote uh, to your ignorance. And ignorance is the root cause of suffering of samsara, as we know. So therefore, we should pay good attention and we should also <laughs> uh, pray ourselves that uh, may I realize this uh, perfect of wisdom, awareness, perfections of wisdom, awareness. If you are able to realize this wisdom, awareness, or if you are able to uh, advance your understanding of wisdom, awareness, then you will solve so many uh, samsaric problems very easily because you have this wisdom, awareness. So therefore this chapter is considered as a very powerful chapter and very uh, necessary in order to get rid of our ignorance or come uh, or be enlightened you know, from this suffering of samsara or to liberate ourselves from this, from this uh, never ending suffering of samsara. So therefore this chapter is very important and uh, this particular wisdom awareness chapter uh, or is the mind which you know <clears throat> penetrates the unfabricated uh, nature of all phenomena and uh, without this practice of prajna paramita or wisdom awareness and the other earlier five paramitas alone cannot uh, liberate us, us from the suffering of samsara the first five paramitas Obviously, we we'll bring lots of comforts and happiness into our life. But if you are lacking the sixth parameter, that is the wisdom mm -hmm. parameter, then you will not, you'll never be able to attend to Buddhahood, nor you'll be able to uh, liberate from the subject of samsara. So, Buddha also said that all the earlier five parameters are actually meant to realize the sixth parameter, the perfection of wisdom awareness. All other five parameters are method actually in order to realize the sixth parameter that is the wisdom awareness. 
Therefore, it is very important. But having said that, then other parameters are not important. It doesn't mean that way. They both are equally important. The first five parameters are method, and the sixth parameter is self restraint. So we always need two unity of method and wisdom in our practice. If we have this method and wisdom together, then you'll be over, able to overcome all the um, uh, difficulties or in suffering of, or sufferings of samsara. You'll be able to defeat all the negative afflictions and emotions. And obviously, by knowing the true nature of all phenomena, you naturally, you are liberated from the not knowing things, ignorance. You'll be naturally liberated from ignorant abhidya. So therefore, this chapter considered as very, very important. And in order to accumulate, you know, merit and wisdom, we also need this, all six parameters, equally important. So therefore, uh, we should remember this. This is very important chapter. <clears throat> So when we study uh, the Pashna Paramita, we always think about uh, in the Pashna Paramita Sutra, where Buddha says, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind. But for us, you know, when you hear, when, for beginner like us, when we first hear these teachings, the sutras, we, it's, it's, we cannot uh, digest these teachings at all. Obviously, you know, because we are being very uh, ordinary individual, we have not gone through all the Buddha's teachings. We have not, we have never, you know, uh, taken time to look inward. We are always dragged externally. We always spend, use our energy and spend our time, you know, from for many uh, lifetimes looking to external phenomena, paying importance to the external phenomena, like uh, uh, shape and color, sound, smell, taste, texture, and so forth. So since we have not given any time for ourselves to look inward, then therefore, when you hear teaching like this, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no uh, body, no mind, then you'll never be able to digest this teachings. Sometimes you may think, very funny but yet when you really pay attention when you really look deeper into ourselves when you really look deeper into the nature of phenomena then you'll realize what does it mean by no eyes no ear no uh, taste no tongue and so forth so this personal parameter actually talks about this it will you know teaches us the um, uh, the unfabricated nature of phenomena. What is the ultimate essence of all this phenomena? The things that now we see are uh, considered as Buddha said, they are like uh, temporary, uh, not the ultimate. Things that we see, things that we hear, things that we consider as important, things that we like, things that we dislike. These are all in the relative level. And we always think that relative labor is the final labor. We never gone beyond uh, what we see, like a beautiful color, beautiful shape, uh, good taste, good smile. We just stuck there. And therefore, we make decisions. This is good. This is bad. This is good. So I need them. Need it. This is bad. So I should reject this. So this this you eventually take your habit of you know liking and disliking and then you're differentiating discriminating and therefore you are trying you're uh, generating uh, attachment and anger and this is how it lead us to creations of karma and then lead us to the experiencing experiencing of that the cre created karma as a re as a result of experiencing the subject of samsara so therefore we should at least try to understand what are causing this suffering of samsara? Why people suffer? Why there's uh, old age, sickness, death, war? You no, know, we should think. We should just not uh, live 
them as there, but we should think beyond what are the cause for this. And Buddha has enlightened us 2,500 plus years ago. What are the root cause of this? And he said, this is because not knowing the true nature of phenomena, unfabricated nature of phenomena. So here today we are trying to understand what are the unfabricated true essence of phenomena. That is why this chapter is considered as very important. Okay, so when Gambhava presents uh, his teaching in Jewel Ornament Liberation, we all know he comprised this with the six topics. So we should again recall this. Then it will, uh, you know, refresh us, our practice, our understanding of the uh, the uh, Gambhava's uh, instruction here. <clears throat> So the six topics, the six major topics, um, which comprise the general explanations of this, uh, his whole teaching. Uh, the six are as follows. The first primary cause, obviously, is the Buddha nature, that we do have Buddha nature as our essence from the beginning of time. Second, the walking basis and that is human body achieving the human body with different qualities thirdly we have this contemporary cause and that is the spiritual master even though we have this buddha nature and we have gained this uh, perfect uh, human body but if you do not have guide which guide which who guides who need to guide us you know because uh, we are still uh, ordinary beings. So if you do not have this guide like uh, spiritual master, then you will not be able to achieve enlightenment. So spiritual master. Then what does the spiritual master do then? He or she gives us instructions. He or she teaches us, you know. So that's the method. His instructions are the method for us to apply those methods in order to free ourselves from the subject of samsara and attain Buddhahood. Then we have this fifth one is the result of that practice. Once you follow that path, that method, what result you will be able to witness, you'll be able to experience the result. And finally, after uh, attainment of that result, what then? Are you going to just rest there or just sleep or just by doing everything? No, there after that is the inactivity of benefiting sentient beings. Because that was the that was your true goal when you give rise to bodhicitta. You said, I will practice six parameters for the benefit of sentient beings. I will give rise to aspiration bodhicitta in order to benefit sentient beings. So since you have that commitment from the beginning time, when you really first enter into the Dharma, when you first took the Bodhisattva vows, then now it is the time when you have at an enlightenment, when you really have witnessed and experienced the result, then your responsibility to a sentient being is to benefit them, and that is known as the activity. So this six major topic comprise the uh, this six major topic comprise the <clears throat> uh, whole teaching of uh, June ordinary liberation by Kapuba. And uh, among these six uh, major topics, we are now and the fourth, that is the method of spiritual master. Okay, spiritual master, the method that he has given us. So we need to follow those um, methods. And there, Gambo, uh, you know, asks question to our, to our side. Okay, you have the primary cause, that is Buddha, Buddhahood. You have this uh, working basis that that is that you have attained the uh, human uh, body. And you also have the special master, contributor course. And then, why are you not enlightened? Why are you still suffering in the suffering uh, in samsara? And then he said, because of four obstacles, we are suffering, still suffering in samsara. And because of not knowing the method, how to get away from this suffering of samsara. How to liberate ourselves from this subject of samsara. So the four obstacles. First one is he said, because we are being too attached to this life's activities, 
as I mentioned earlier. We spend so much time uh, accommodating temporary benefits. We spend many times and energy in order to uh, bring comfortable with the external phenomena. We need to have good house, good food, good smell, good structure. And we, we, we usually don't pay so much attention about our mental health, our internal uh, stability, our uh, stability of our mind, peaceful, uh, tranquility, calm abiding state of our mind. We rather focus on the external phenomena. We are trying to bring uh, find the solution externally, which I uh, said earlier is never uh, lasting. So therefore, here, Kambuka's one of the reasons why we are still suffering some sorrow is because we are too much attached to this life's activity so that we forget the importance of our internal value, samadhi, our internal samadhi meditation, loving kindness and compassion, forgiveness and wisdom and so forth. So that is the one reason. So in order to uh, eliminate that, what we need to practice is uh, we need to meditate on impermanence. So when we have the instructions of impermanence, then we will not you know, spend too much time and energy uh, towards this life times activity. Then we have heard so many stories of our great masters you know, who did not pay so much attention to, uh, towards the gaining of name, fame, wealth, and so forth. So they thought all this you know, uh, temporary benefit, temporary happiness, name, fame, wealth, they consider this as, you know, uh, something that obstructs their internal strength, internal value. They, this will distract them from their meditation, from their internal uh, strength of uh, realizing wisdom. So therefore, as you can see from our uh, story, from our different lineage masters, how they try to you know, renounce them, how they try to uh, uh, go into the solitary retreats, how they try to dis uh, distance them from the uh, samsaric old and so forth. So that's one solution there. We are too much attached to this lifetime's activity. Please consider as, please try to uh, have some time uh, on the wisdom of uh, impermanence. This will definitely help us. This will uh, bring the value, uh, this will automatically decrease our value of being so attached to something, whatever you are so attached to. So it will bring you some, some kind of uh, relaxation there. So if you are too attached to something, you are actually you know, <coughs> caught up into that chain of suffering. So when you realize the importance uh, of in, uh, the nature of impermanence, so this is another wisdom, knowing the impermanence of phenomena it is another one, some level of wisdom is there. So when you have, when you really implement the understanding of impermanence into your day-to-day -day life, then you will not, you will naturally release, you will be naturally released from that chain of attachment. That's definitely beneficial. Likewise, second obstacle, Kambhava mentioned, why are we still suffering some size? He said that we are, being too attached to the pleasure of samsara. The earlier was attachment to, a, to this lifetime's activity. The next here, the second one is being too attached to the pleasure of samsara. That is more than this human life, but then, you know, trying to be born as in the God realm and all these sort of things, still stuck in samsara, uh, pleasure of uh, samsara. So for this, in order to eliminate this second obstacle, Kambhava said that we need to meditate on faults of samsara. Even though you you be, uh, you are you born in the God realms, there's still you are not you are, you are still not uh, completely free from suffering of samsara. Now, all the happiness of God realms, the God realms are limited. They are not unlimited. They are limited uh, pleasures. So once that if limitation and limitation expires, then one will again suffer, fall into suffering of samsara, as we know, as we studied all the different uh, 
what you call the nature of certain samsara uh, of the different uh, six realms. <clears throat> then third one, Gamba said, the third obstacle is being too attached to nirvana. That's why we are not still uh, attained complete Buddhahood. So that means that is to say that we, in these worldly terms, also when you have everything with you, good money, good job, good you know, environment, good family members, and you are too attached to this that you forget Dharma, that you forget, uh, try to look inwardly and experience the internal strength, loving kindness, and compassion, and so forth. Another example would be uh, like those practitioners who practice uh, their hearer, Patika Buddha, and Arhats. They are actually, they have cut down all the negative afflictions and emotions, and they are resting in the uh, long term uh, peace, nirvana. But that doesn't mean that they have uh, completely awakened. They are completely awakened or they are completely enlightened. So, therefore, uh, for those, in order to eliminate this kind of, of uh, thought obstacles, uh, Gambhava said we need to um, consider on loving kindness and compassion. If you have loving kind kindness and compassion to us, sentient beings, then you will not rest in peace. You will, uh, you will uh, think that you will take other sentient beings suffering as your own suffering. Then you will do something for them. Then you, you cannot rest uh, in that pleasure for a long time. Uh, you will not, you know, your motivation is to benefit sentient beings. So therefore, uh, you will not rest in that peaceful moment, even though it is uh, peaceful. But then you will also uh, have the same responsibility uh, to teach others, to benefit others. So the other benefit, other sentient being also will be able to attend and uh, realize the same uh, nirvana, the same uh, peaceful awareness, state of mind. So therefore, you should practice loving kindness and compassion. And finally, the third for a fourth fold here is not knowing the method to, to enlightenment. They really want to practice. They really want to fulfill their dream. They really want to attend Buddhahood, but they don't know how to do so. What to be adopted, what to be rejected. For those, uh, over here says, uh, in order to eliminate this, then uh, cultivating bodhicitta. How to cultivate bodhicitta will help us. And here again, Maha, especially, uh, this relates with especially the Mahayana teaching. The actual knowing of unfabricated uh, natural phenomena will come through Mahayana practice. Obviously in Hinayana practice, there's the wisdom of in, uh, impermanence nature, there's this wisdom of selflessness nature, uh, there's wisdoms of seeing the faults of samsara, but yet they do not still have the full knowledge of understanding the unfabricated nature of phenomena as emptiness yet. So therefore, if you really want to free yourself from the sadhu samsara, if you really want to, you know, eliminate your ignorance completely, fully, then we need to have Vajna Paramita, wisdom awareness, that's very important, okay? So in cultivations of bodhicitta, as we know, uh, relative bodhicitta and ultimate bodhicitta. In relative bodhicitta, we have aspiration bodhicitta and engaged bodhicitta. So we are now at the engaged bodhicitta, really engaging, uh, you know, the six parameters in order to benefit others. So among the six parameters, we are now at the sixth, the last parameter, Parameter, uh, which is known as wisdom perfections of wisdom awareness. <clears throat> so we try to understand this chapter. In this session, chapter 17, the presentations are in same manner, just like uh, the other parameters. Kambopa use the seven manner or seven points to present this chapter as well. Okay, the summary. 
reflections on false and gorgeous. That means reflecting on the false of not having this personal parameter and gorgeous of having this personal parameter. Likewise, second definition of this personal parameter. Third, class, classifications of this parameter, personal parameter of this wildness. And then uh, characteristic of each of these classifications of personal parameter. Then fifth one is what is to be known? This means the view. What is the view of personal parameter? What is personal parameter actually? First, we need to know the view. We need to have some understanding. We just don't uh, just uh, go and practice, but we sh if you have some view of personal parameter, then it will be easier for us when you really uh, practice, when you really put them into practice. So first, some idea. Like, uh, for example, if you are going to pilgrimage, you first need to have where you're going. You have you at least need to have some idea of that site where you're visiting, at that destination. Uh, okay, maybe there's Gurumbuchi's cave, Gurumbuchi meditated there. He have taught so many disciples there. He have uh, liberated so many sentient beings by his uh, wisdom. So if you have this kind of idea, then second thing is you really want to go there. It inspires you to go there and to visit the site and pay respect, light uh, water lamps and inside incense and so forth. So likewise here also, we need to have some idea of, of personal parameter. We need to have some idea of emptiness here, emptiness nature of phenomena. Why this is called emptiness nature. Then the sixth one is what is to be practiced. Okay, after having that in view in your mind, then you really try to experience that view. You really want to experience uh how it how it is <laughs> to uh, realize emptiness how to do so you, you need to have method there you really want to experience this otherwise just having the knowledge of personal parameter just having uh, master degrees or phd in personal parameter will not necessarily lead us to the uh, liberation the full and complete enlightenment there's no certainty at all. So what we need is, we need to have some experience. We need to really go and understand and feel uh, this true emptiness nature of phenomena. Then only we'll be able to uh, uh, eliminate ignorance. Once you are eliminated ignorance, you're, you're perfect, uh, enlightened. You have the whole, whole wisdom to and that wisdom is very powerful. It will eliminate naturally all the different afflictions and emotions. And that is what we are trying to do. That is our focus, our goal to experience that permanent and lasting happiness. And finally, the result. Okay. First, having view. Second, going to going into practice in order to uh, realize that view. And finally, yes, experiencing that result. The experience and result here is the Buddhahood, complete and uh, complete and awakened Buddhahood. Here. So these seven topics comprise the perfections of wisdom awareness. Okay. So the first one, uh, reflecting on the faults of not having this personal parameter and reflecting on the virtues of having this. And having what is the advantages of realizing personal parameter and what are the disadvantages of not having this personal parameter wisdom okay so if you know this then you will clearly see oh why i should practice personal parameter why i should have realizations of wisdom awareness so the first one even though you may have practiced the generosity through meditative concentration all the first five parameters the rank of omniscience will not be achieved if you lack the perfections of wisdom awareness. So, as I mentioned earlier, the other five personal parameters, so other five parameters are method. They are meant to be, to realize the sixth parameter actually. 
they are all meant to realize the sixth parameter. Therefore, if you are lacking the sixth parameter, then you will not be able to get an enlightenment. Here, Kambhava says, Why is this so? It is like a group of, of blind people who cannot get the city where they uh, of their wishes without a guide. So six parameter is like a guide. It's like a, a guide with the eye who will be able to lead you to your perfect destination. Other five parameter are like people without eye, eyeless. So therefore, six parameter is the one which leads us to complete and perfect Buddhahood and complete liberation from suffering of samsara. On the other hand, if you possess wisdom awareness, if you have the uh, six parameter, then you will be at a state of omniscience because like group of blind people who are lit into a city of their wish by the help of guide, then the entire team will be able to uh, reach to that destination. So likewise here, six parameter will lead all the other parameters into the liberation, into the perfect and complete enlightenment. So therefore, we need to have both this method and wisdom in order to attain complete and perfect Buddhahood. If you're lagging one of one of them, then actually you are you will not reach your destination. So therefore it is very important. So, in that case, so when I say wisdom awareness is very, very important. So in that case, wisdom awareness alone would be sufficient. And the answer is no. Wisdom awareness need to have the basic foundations of five parameters. Here it says, why do we need all this method of generosity and so forth if only the sixth parameter is able to lead us to suffering uh, from uh, us to the complete and perfect Buddhahood? None are sufficient alone. We need both of them. We need to have unity of wisdom and method. If you are lacking one or other, then it is insufficient. So the lamb for the path to the enlightenment says, method without wisdom awareness and wisdom awareness without method are bondage. Therefore, do not abandon either. So we need to take these two as you know, our wisdom and method as uh, two wings of the bird. If, if the bird had two perfect uh, wings, then bird can fly wherever they want. We are lagging one of the wings then you may not be able to fly to your destination. So likewise here, we need to have both wisdom and awareness in order to attain complete and perfect for that. Okay. Where then will you be bound if you practice method and wisdom awareness separately? Another question that may arise into our mind. If a bodhisattva only depends on wisdom awareness without method, he will fall into the one-sided uh, nirvanic is asserted by here and bound there, unable to attend the non-abiding nirvana. So that's the answer. If you are practicing them separately, then you will be falling one-sided. Like if you are just practicing the method, then you will be uh, uh, fall into the one-sided nirvanic peace here and Patika Buddha practice. Furthermore, it binds one there permanently according to the assertions of the three welfare system. Even according to the assertions of the one vehicle system, one will be bound there for 84,000 colors. So therefore, we need to practice this together. If one only depends on matter without wisdom, awareness, one will not cross beyond being a childish, ordinary person. Therefore, one will remain bound in samsara. So, if you are lacking wisdom awareness, obviously you fall in samsara. If you are lacking the first method, first five parameters, 
you will not fall in samsara, but you will fall in uh, one kind of temporary uh, nirvana, not complete and perfect without yet. So we don't want to fall into these two extremes either. We need to balance them too, and we need to have both method and wisdom so that we can fly towards the complete and perfect Buddhahood. So that is what Kambhava is trying to say here. There's another uh, quote here from the Ashangmati Request Sutra. Since the practice of wisdom awareness without method will bind one to Nirvana, and the practice of method without our, uh, wisdom awareness will bind one to samsara. It therefore becomes necessary to unify them. So that's very important. We don't want to either fall in samsara or in nirvana. We want to uh, get uh, away from these two extreme sides and unify them into our practice so that we'll be able to reach complete and perfect Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. The sutra shown by the Bhima Lakriti says, what is the bondage of all bodhisattvas and what is liberation? Wisdom awareness not supported by method is bondage. Wisdom awareness supported by method is liberation. Method not supported by wisdom awareness is bondage and method supported by wisdom awareness is liberation. So these are important quotes from different uh, sutras that we need to remember and will be also beneficial in our practice. Therefore, practicing either method or wisdom awareness separately is the activity of Mara, which means that if you practice them separately, then it is not going to benefit uh, much. Uh, so therefore, we need to uh, utilize the six parameters all together. Uh, the engage bodhicitta in order to benefit ourselves and all sentient beings, in order to bring ourselves and all sentient beings out of suffering of samsara, we need to practice all the six parameters. All the six parameters are equally important. But the first five parameters are actually meant to in order to realize the sixth parameter, because sixth parameter is the most important now, practice here. That doesn't mean that other five parameters are not important. Without five parameters, we will not be able to uh, attain or realize the six parameter. So therefore, it, you need to unify them into your practice. And this will lead us to perfect and complete Buddhahood. For example, just as we need the eye to discern the road and fit to cross the distance in order to reach the city of our choice. Likewise, in order to reach the city of non-abiding nirvana, we need to unify the eyes of wisdom, awareness, and the fit of method. So here, I'm always giving the example of eye and fit. If you want to uh, go and reach your destination, you first need eye and then fit. Eye to see your destination, to, to see your road, and fit to touch the road, cross First of all, so that you will be able to reach your destination. So it's like method and wisdom. It's like I and fit. The Mount Gaya Sutra says, in Greek, the path of Mayana is twofold, method and wisdom awareness. So this is another very important quote. Mayana path is of twofold method and wisdom method without wisdom not sufficient wisdom without method not sufficient so when you enlighten in order to enlighten you need this both then you'll be able to benefit certain beings wisdom obviously will get rid of your ignorance so you're fully awakened and method so how we can benefit certain beings by being generous to others, you know, patience, intelligence, and so forth. So if you have, if you are practicing generosity, but you are, if you are not patience, 
then you know sometimes we make mistakes we yell people we you know, scold them even though you're practicing generosity because you're lacking the other one likewise if you are lacking intelligence then your practice of generosity is uh, not continuing because of lacking of your intelligence you practice and you forget then you have lots of gap between so this is how we are, we are lacking our uh, practice so we need to have support of all these different uh, para, para, parameters in order to uh, you know uh, obtain complete and perfect brotherhood furthermore wisdom awareness does not arise by itself for example even if you kindle a fire from a small amount of wood a gathering a large amount of uh, sorry uh, a large long burning fire would not appear but if you made a fire by gathering a large amount of dry wood it will become large and long burning and you will be not be able to put it out even if you try to extinguish it likewise this is the example likewise great wisdom awareness will not arise where there is a little accumulation of merit so in order to gain wisdom we need to have lots of you know, great amount of method a combination of method so therefore we need to practice generosity uh, practice discipline practice patience diligence and, and samadhi obviously so forth in order to attend the six parameter because if your mind is not stable for example if you do not if you do not have the fifth parameter that is the samadhi parameter uh, if you do not have that samadhi then you will not be able to you know see the true nature of your mind at, at first place in order to see the true nature of your mind you at least need some kind of stability some abiding stable stability of your mind so see how important are other person other parameters uh, to attain the six parameters but on the other hand great wisdom awareness will arise where there are great accumulations of merits of from generosity moral ethic patience diligence and so forth and it will burn all the obscurations so you will have all this five you know five personal five parameters uh, supporting the six parameters then it will it will become a big fire that will you know burn all the different uh, uh, ignorance obscurations negative relations and emotions then it becomes so powerful but if you're lagging one of them then not so powerful you may see a little bit of uh, nature of your, nature of your mind you may be able to see some sort of uh, imperm uh, emptiness nature of phenomena but you're not being able to see the complete it will obstruct you because you do not have uh, such a uh, huge uh, number of accommodations of merits that is why uh, when uh, the teachings of buddha is introduced buddha didn't talk about emptiness right away because it is it is it is not useful then first people need to accumulate merits so therefore he first talk about generosity and he talk about uh, disciplining your body speech and mind uh, asserting you know not uh, trying to protect your body speech and mind from hurting others then slowly talking about diligence uh, patience and slowly he lead us to the pasna paramita so likewise we also first need to accumulate lots of good merits in order to realize the personal parameter and once you have lost accumulated lots of uh, merits by practicing the uh, five, first five parameter, uh, parameters then definitely when you realize the sixth parameter no one can stop you from getting out of this samsara no one can stop you from being able to attend the complete and perfect buddhahood this is what he and uh, Kambupa wants us to know. Okay. So therefore, for wisdom awareness, you have to depend on generosity and so forth, the method. And also, if you practice methods like wisdom, uh, sorry, the personal uh, uh, generosity and so forth, if you have, if you are lacking wisdom, then that generosity practice will be mundane generosity. 
it will not be super mundane generosity. Okay, so that's also very important. So you we need to unify these two method and wisdom, which is very excuse me, which is very, very important to remember this too. <laughs> and engaging in the contract of Bodhisattva says all of these branches, branches meaning the first five parameters were set by the Buddha to be for the purpose of wisdom. That's it. That's the quote from the Buddha himself. Therefore, we need to understand that we need to unify this both uh, method and wisdom. In other words, we need to practice all the six parameters. We need to uh, give importance to all the six parameters. Uh, usually what happens is people uh, usually in our uh, habitual tendency we we try the easiest one okay giving things to others practicing generosity and you know practicing some patience practicing some disciplines but then not paying so much attention to emptiness we think that emptiness is something that is <laughs> that is very far away from our level to reach and therefore we are always you know delaying our uh, enlightenment because we don't want to touch on the personal parameter the <laughs> wisdom awareness side yet because we don't feel comfortable hearing no nose no eyes no tongue no body no mind and that is why we are delaying our enlightenment but here Gambhava encourages us to unify these two teachings pay equally important to all the six parameters and practice them contemplate them and put them into our practice so that you will be able to utilize this all six parameters, you know, to overcome your ignorance, the root cause of our some suffering of samsara. If you are able to do so, it will be so wonderful that you are free from the suffering of samsara. Okay. With that note, I will conclude here for today's uh, talk. And uh, let's not, let us uh, dedicate the merits for the uh, benefit of all sentient beings. Especially dedicate this merit uh, to subsiding the uh, war and pandemic and hunger which are taking place in our life. We are witnessing all these uh, sufferings in this in our age. So we definitely need to uh, at least even we cannot help them in person, but. We need to make good aspirations and we need to dedicate our merits so that these uh, obstacles uh, will subside soon and then people can uh, gain their uh, happiness again. So for that, we need to dedicate this merit for the benefit of such beings. So nam di ye tham je se pa nye tham ne nye ve ta nam pham je ne ke ka na che pa lao tru boi Thank you.